Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-white aggro deck titled Snow White, as it features multiple snow lands, including Faceless Haven, which can turn into a 4-3 creature with Vigilance, as long as we can pay the 3 snow mana to activate it. And then another new card from Kaltheim is Halvar, God of Battle, which is a 4 mana, 4-4 four four legendary creature god, saying creatures we control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike, and at the beginning of each combat we may attach target aura, or equipment attached to a creature we control to target creature we control. So this can essentially move one of our equipment or auras for free. But the upside of Halvar is that if we draw multiples, we can also play Sword of the Realms instead, a 2-mana legendary artifact equipment, saying equipped creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and has vigilance, and whenever equipped creature dies, return it to its owner's hand with an equip cost of 2. So drawing multiple copies of Halvar still synergizes with himself, as we'll get access to nice, cheap and powerful equipment, as well as Halvar, which will give our equipped creatures double strike. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have the full playset of Maul of the Sky, Enclaves as a powerful equipment to synergize with Halvar, giving the enchanted or equipped creature in this case plus 2 plus 2 flying and first strike, and costs 4 mana to move the equipment afterwards, but we get to attach it for free when it enters a battlefield, as well as 2 copies of Sentinel's Eyes, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance, can also escape it out of the graveyard, so can sometimes play it for free if we're playing against a mill deck that will put it in the graveyard for us. So these are kind of the synergies with Halvar, and then the rest of the deck is your typical white aggro deck, with Usher of the Fallen, another new addition from Kaltheim, a 1-mana 2-1 that has boast for 1 and a white, so if the Usher attacks we get to make a 1-1 human warrior creature token if we pay the boast cost. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck then. At 1 mana we've got Alsaid of Life's Bounty, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one enchantment creature nymph with lifelink, and for 1 mana we can sacrifice the Alsaid to give target creature or enchantment we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. So to reiterate, protection entails that the targeted creature or enchantment cannot be damaged, enchanted or equipped, blocked or targeted by sources of the chosen color. Next up we've got two copies of a giant killer, which can be used as an adventure to destroy a creature with power 4 or greater first, otherwise a 1-2 human peasant that for 2 mana can tap target creature. And then the full playset of Selfless Savior, which is also quite synergistic in this deck, as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one that we can sacrifice to make another creature we control indestructible until end of turn, so it can protect one of our creatures that's maybe equipped by a Maul of the Skyclaves, so we don't have to spend the mana re-equipping it. Can also synergize nicely with the Sword of the Realms, as we can sacrifice Savior and then put it back into our hand, so we can replay it once again. So there's a lot of neat synergies like that in the deck. And then we've already discussed Usher and Sentinel's Eyes. At 2 mana, the full place out of Luminarch Aspirant is just a very powerful 2-drop. It's a 1-1 one, one saying at the beginning of each combat on our turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. So that can quickly get out of hand and accumulate value over time. And then Seasoned Hallowblade, another nice creature in any equipment deck, as a 2 mana 3 1 that can let us discard a card to make it indestructible until end of turn. So it's a very safe target for us to put our Maul of the Skyclaves, as the opponent will have a hard time destroying our Seasoned Hallowblade as long as we have cards to discard. And then curving a Hallowblade into a Maul into Halvar represents a ton of damage. And then besides Maul at 3 mana we also have the full play set of Skyclave Apparition, giving us a bit of main deck interaction as we get a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield can exile up to 1 target to non-land, non-token permanent we don't control with converted mana cost 4 or less. And if the opponent can get rid of our Skyclave Apparition, they get an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card, but they never get the exiled card back. And then as we mentioned, Faceless Haven in the mana base gives the deck a nice late game. If the opponent casts a Sweeper for instance, a lot of decks might struggle, but at least we still have a Faceless Haven that we can activate to maybe take out a Planeswalker or close out the game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a hand loaded full of 1-drops and Halvar, which we could play as Sword of the Realms, which is still quite nice with Alsaid and Savior. We are facing a Lurus deck, so most likely blue-black rogues. So having a nice low curve could be useful. I don't actually mind this. And then turn one, I'll lead with the Alsaid, I think, just for the lifelink. 
if we want to play around a counter spell, we could just play it turn two sword. Otherwise, we could double one drop. All right, never mind. Opponents on cycling. So gaining life against a cycling deck is quite important. So I think we'll wait on sword until next turn and then for now just double one drop. The opponent shouldn't have too many removal spells for our creatures, so Maul plus a lifelink creature is also pretty decent. Turn to Stinger. It's gonna put a halt to our attacks on the ground. So, yeah, I think playing Sword is probably the way to go now, since we seem to be missing our land drops. So waiting to go Maul and then Halvar for double strike might not be realistic. And then we'll pass. So next turn, I've got a few options. Probably want to equip our lifelink creature given the chance. Rescue are going to make a bunch of 1-1s, one -one, so that's also problematic since that can just block our all side all day long. So we'll definitely need to wait until we play all of the Skyclaves first. So not loving our position so far. Aspirant does help. So I guess now we'll play Aspirants. And then we can send in the 2-2 lifelinker. Which we can also make indestructible if needed. And then hope to draw land soon so we can play Maul. Followed by maybe a Sword of the Realms. The cycling deck able to play a bunch of the pathways to potentially cast some of the spells they have. Including some of the black or blue ones. Another savior. So is it time to equip sword now? I think so. And then we've got savior to grant indestructible. And we'll keep loading counters on the Alsade. Cycles a startling development. Might see a triple block of the 1-1s. One I've got more selfless saviors in hand. They might kill Alsade with a Zenith Flare, but that's a fine exchange. Go for Blood could also be used with a Rescuer to fight, although that doesn't seem like a great trade-off for the opponent. Instead, pays 3 mana to put Lurus in hand, and there's another land. So, we could Maul, or we could set up a bit more protection for the Alsade. I don't mind playing Savior first, and then next turn Maul, and then we'll have a nice protected Alsade here. So let's start there. Play Savior. I guess I'll play another one for now. Attack for six. Play Usher. Ooh, Shredded sails the equipment. Fair enough. So that happens. Unless, I guess, Alsaid can only protect enchantments and creatures and not equipment. So yeah, that happens. Well, at least they're not killing Maul. But uh, that does slow us down a little bit. Alright, so we're 29. 
double savior in play. And we're about to give it flying, so we'll have a two turn clock with our Alsaid basically. Lurus doesn't have anything to get back. Footfall Crater, they can get back with Lurus. Alright, that's fine. Sentinel's Eyes, probably not as good as Maul. And then we gotta hope they don't have another Shredded Sails. Just to all say attacking. Alright, let's see what they can come up with here. If they want to attack with Lurus to gain 3, we could also potentially block with Savior and sacrifice it to deny the lifelink. Although, it might not even be necessary since we can just put an extra counter on Alsaid, enchant it with Sentinel's Eyes and we'll still have enough damage here. So your opponent's down to 4 mana. Cycles developments. So it seems like they're digging for an answer here. Now of course Zenith Flare also gains a bunch of life, so that can keep them alive for an extra turn. But it looks like they're going in a different direction. And yeah, our opponent explodes. All in on one creature, but the cycling deck, especially when facing a big life linker, is going to struggle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a two-land hand featuring a reasonable curve and then Halvar that we can also play as Sword of the Realms. Yeah, we'll need to draw a land or two here, but don't mind it. Turn one, probably I'll say it, into Aspirants to make a 2-2 two -two lifelinker. Our opponent with a snow-covered plains as well, so could be the mirror match. So in the mirror match, would we rather have Halvar or Sword of the Realms? Uh, it kind of depends. As our opponent lets all the dogs out here. So don't necessarily want to play Apparition yet. So for now we could play Sword and Savior. Make a 3-3 Alsaid. That seems fine. And then Savior plus Sword also synergizes nicely. Let's see if our opponent has more than just Selfless Savior. A Faceless Haven. So they could have their own Skyclave Apparition for Alsaid or Aspirants. Let's see what they target. It's gonna be the Alsaid. Take three. Alright, perfect. We get to play Hollow Blade and Equip Sword this turn. And then the question is, what do we equip here? If I equip Savior, we basically have a repeatable Savior that we can use. Aspirant is also not a bad target. 
I think we equip Savior attack with it and then put counter on Aspirant itself so it can also block all the opposing Saviors here. And then play Hallowblade. And we're of course pretty happy if they block here. Alright, so we get our Savior back. Four mana. One card I don't want to see that some versions play is Legion Angel. Instead it's their own Sword of the Realms. Which we might Apparition. Opponents go to 4-2 Vigilance. Which we will take. Alright, so I get to play Apparition and Equip. Target Sword. And then who do we equip? I guess I could equip Aspirant and put Counter on it. And then I probably don't want to attack with Hallowblade. So we both had similar draws, but we do have an Aspirant that's providing value turn after turn. Opponent going for the double block, that's fine. We'll get our Aspirant back. Opponent's got their own Hallowblade. Alrighty, so... Could also think about activating Faceless Haven, although this turn we probably have a better use for our mana. So I can play Aspirant, equip, play Savior. And then the question is who to equip and where to put the counter. So Hellblade kind of bounces off. I don't mind discarding Haven to make it indestructible. I could put Sword on Apparition, which I don't mind getting back. So, question remains where to put the counter. Could put counter on Hellblade just because it's a slightly safer investment long term. And then I can play Savior to also make it indestructible for now. And then I'll have to decide whether or not I want to play Haven or keep it in hand for Hallowblade. So here, could use Savior. I think I'd rather just discard Haven, to be fair. I think we have enough mana already and probably not going to activate double Haven anytime soon. Alright, opponent got a little bit of value by discarding a Sentinel's Eyes. Falls to 11. Opponent will need to draw another Apparition to get rid of my sword here to kind of break the board stall. But it looks like her opponent has seen enough as we manage to outvalue them with our sword. So yeah, just being patient on our apparition, waiting for the opponent's big threats, which happen to be sword, 
and then trying to take over with their own copy worked out here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with not a particularly exciting hand, but definitely a keepable one. Turn one I'll say, turn two Aspirants. Let's take it from there. Facing a Fireblade Charger. So, do we still want to turn one I'll say it here? A different line of play could be Savior into Aspirants to make sure we can protect Aspirants a little bit better against potential burn spells. And we do miss out on some good lifelink hits early on, but protecting Aspirants seems more relevant. Alright, Robber, so looks like Monorant Aggro. Opponent hits one of her own copies of Alsaid, which is pretty strong. Another Aspirant. So Aspirant probably put counter on itself. And then I might as well attack since I'm not planning to block with it. So getting this Alsaid down as soon as possible is going to be key. As your opponent gets another one drop here with Usher. So I could trade Aspirant for Robber. I think we just have to take the hit one more time. So opponent's probably gonna make use of those cards from Robber of the Rich while they can. On the bright side, they won't be able to use the boast ability on Usher. And another charger. Alright. So now I think I like Alsaid's second aspirant, put all the counters on Alsaid. Then we'll have a 3 3 lifelink that we can also make indestructible. So even if the opponent has an Ember Cleaf to put on Robber, we can still get a reasonable exchange. Our opponent takes three to play Shadow Skull untapped. So this could be Ember Cleaf plus Pump Spell from Rimrock Knight. But let's see here. The logical block would be Alsaid on Robber, maybe Aspirant on Alsaid. The opponent can of course also sacrifice their Alsaid to protect Robber. But that's probably not what's necessarily going to happen. Could also block with the Savior if we know for a fact that it's going to get sacrificed. So I could, for example, block like this. Opponent plays, so let's say, an Amber Cleave on the Robber. We sacrifice Savior, make Alsaid indestructible. And we soak up two extra damage in the process. Then they probably also have a Pump Spell for an Alsaid. We don't have to put the uh, Aspirant in harm's way here. So I could just block like this and see what happens. Alright, there's the Ember Cleave. Goes on the robber. And now we have to hope they don't have a burn spell here in response. Alright, stomp on the aspirant. That's okay. So they did not use Alsay to protect Robber. Apparition sadly cannot get rid of Embercleave, but now we do have a big life-linking creature that we can also give Vigilance. So, what's the play here? Can go Sentinel's Eyes plus Apparition, and then what do we Apparition? Maybe the Alsaid, since that protection could be relevant, or we just hold it and just play an Usher for now. And then, don't really intend to block with Aspirant, so might as well attack. Alright, 
All right, so we're gaining life. And the opponent's creatures are relatively small, so Embercleave's not the end of the world. And if they play Bone Crusher to then equip it, we can Apparition it. Yeah, Frostbite would have been pretty bad for us last turn, but luckily it was just Stomp. Because your opponent is playing Snow Mountains, specifically for the one-mana removal spell. Ooh, a Shatter Skull Smashing. Yeah, that happens. Not gonna sacrifice Alsate to save Aspirant here. So our late game plan doesn't look as great anymore now that Aspirant is gone. So if I were to attack with Alsade, they can pretty easily trade off a few of their creatures for it. If I play Apparition exiling, let's say, Usher, then they can still triple block. Plus they could also sacrifice Alsade to give Usher protection from white. So, yeah, my play might just be to pass a turn. On the bright side, I'll say it is blocking pretty well here, so it's not like my opponent has any good attacks. So I think we'll wait to play Apparition on a different target. Although, most likely, my opponent will be able to give protection from white with Alsade. But maybe they tap out by equipping and playing Bone Crusher. Right, there's Bone Crusher. All their opponents keeps one card in hand. Another land to draw. So if we Apparition Giant, it just gets protection, and then next turn they can equip. And that's not going to be great for me. So what's the alternative? There's not a great one. Apparition, Exiled Alsade. Kind of boils down to the same. But at this point it's unlikely for my opponent to tap out and go shields down on the protection. So I think I'm better off just getting the 2-2 creature in play. Alright, opponent lets the Apparition resolve. Still no great attack. If we can find them all of the Skyclaves, for instance, that would be nice. Alright, that explains why they let it resolve, because they had another Stomp. So they now get a 3-3, which can be equipped. So yeah, all of the Skyclaves would be a good draw. Ooh, Goldspan Dragon, that's scary. Hellfire would also be decent. Another Luminarch Aspirant, perhaps. But we don't have many turns to top deck here. Hello Blades, not particularly great. That's why we're holding the planes. So, yeah, just don't have any good attacks. An extra number cleave on gold span represents 10 damage. So we'll pass once again. But this game looks over. Had a promising start, but they managed to deal with both aspirants and then gold span ember cleave, a pretty powerful way to end the game. Opponent may be contemplating. A lethal attack by sacking the Alsei to give Usher protection from white, which would represent 12 damage here. But we do have an unknown card in hand, so maybe they don't feel the need to go for it. So we're at 2. And now even our best top deck doesn't get us out of this. And it's another planes. Alright, GG's. Let's get in one last time. So 
So this is what would have happened had we attacked earlier. And our opponent can attack for lethal, we're empty-handed. Showing off the Rimrock Knight plus Goldspan interaction, which is pretty neat. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Savior to protect Aspirants, and then we can maybe play Halvar to synergize with the Sentinel's Eyes to give double strike, or we could play Sword, depending on the situation. Well, let's see what we're up against here. A Woodland Chasm, so some sort of snow deck. Picked up Maul of the Skyclaves. Alright, so... Now, it's even more tempting to... play Helvar as a creature. So I think I'm still putting Counter on Aspirant itself, because we have Savior to protect it. And we kind of want to go all in on one creature. When we have Maul, and then Helvar for double strike. Innkeeper, so Black-Green Adventures. Falmer Knight draws a card right away. But we get to fly over the Death Touch creature here. And next turn give a double strike. Elspeth's Nightmare to kill Savior, pretty strong. So now if they have a removal spell for Aspirant, we could be in trouble. Unless we decide to play Sword and equip Sword to the Aspirant. Although, to be fair, if I hit them for 10 down to 4 and they spend their turn killing Aspirant, then next turn I just get to move the Maul to Halvar and they're still dead. And I guess we also get an Aspirin trigger here, so... So opponents all the way to two. They do get to take my Sentinel's Eyes. One way we can potentially cast Sentinel's Eyes next turn is by playing Hallow Blade, discarding the card we drew for the draw step, so we can escape Sentinel's Eyes by getting rid of two cards in our graveyard, but that's assuming they haven't killed my flying creature here, so yeah, my opponent is dead in multiple ways, so getting to see a bit of Halvar synergy here with equipment, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not a very exciting hand, unless it's a matchup where Hallowblade lines up particularly well. I think I'm still gonna try it. So this would be good against a more controlling strategy, perhaps. Because Anne Valley indicates some sort of green creature deck, where typically Hallowblade is not at its best, unless it's paired with an equipment. Alright, so we get to attack and probably just play Hallowblade instead of Boasting. And then next turn we can enchant it with the Sentinel's Eyes. So Stomp takes care of Usher. And a Beast means that even the Sentinel's Eyes isn't enough for the Hallowblade to attack, but hello there, Giant Killer. Also good enough for killing beasts. Oh, 
and that it also delays a potential Great Hench, which the opponent might have been setting up on turn 4. Beanstalk's gonna ramp. And no extra land drop for the turn. Ooh, Maul of the Skyclaves, this is great. And Red Green is gonna really struggle to get rid of an indestructible Hallow Blade. And now between Vigilance, Flying, and the extra Power and Toughness, it's gonna close out the game very quickly. So some fortunate top decks. Five mana. Ooh, Shield Breaker, so they do have some main deck answers to artifacts, which is unusual for a deck in best of one. So the game's not over yet. In fact, I would say if my opponent has a great henge in hand that they can cast soon, they could easily get back into it. Aspirant, another good top deck, as we can now put counter on Hellblade so we don't have to discard a card. Also can't forget about Faceless Haven. So, could see a chum block here. And then, could just play Giant Killer to potentially tap down a blocker next turn, or we could play another Hallow Blade, and then next turn between double Hallow Blade and Faceless Haven, we could have a good attack. Yeah, there's not too many blockers my opponent can have at this point. That would be an inconvenience. Maybe like an Elder Gargroth, but we can still attack past it with a 6-powered Hallow Blade. Uh, another Stomp on Aspirant this time. Opponent can play a blocker. So if I activate Faceless Haven, they probably trade Bone Crusher for Haven, take 8 down to 3, and I still get to play a Giant Killer, so that seems pretty great. Now we know this is the haven we just played for the turn. It also says on the small notification there. Because you wouldn't want to animate a haven that just entered the battlefield, as it will be unable to attack. So we'll discard Usher. That does open up the potential for the opponent to maybe kill my Hello Blade, but with our opponent at 4, and this many threats, I don't think we mind. Six mana. For Bone Crusher. And the Rimrock Knight. Alright, GG's. So, got to see a bit of our Faceless Haven in action too here. So yeah, overall, Mono White Aggro or Snow White is a pretty solid deck nowadays. Can apply a lot of early pressure, the equipment plus Halvar, give the deck a nice late game, and then Faceless Haven also cannot be underestimated, especially when facing something like Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which can otherwise wipe our board. We're still left with a land that can take out Ugin, and then maybe help us take over the late game as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.